<laughs> so we're talking about priming the well. If you didn't catch any of that, the point is you can't just read your Bible here just verbatim, word for word. You can, but you have to dig a little deeper, and hopefully this process has kind of showed you all that a little bit. That Even like today, we went an hour on the Church of Pergamos last week, and we really just, you could argue, scratched the surface. Right. Uh, you can't just read the, you know, I, a lot of people will say, you know, like my son, he'll read his Bible app just to say he had his streak for the day that he's still reading his Bible, but... Just reading the words isn't isn't the whole idea. We're supposed to study mm-hmm. it out. We're supposed to research this stuff, and we're supposed to get revelation about this stuff. And if you're just th- that's the whole point of these church this church um, study we're doing the seven churches. If you just read this stuff, you you'll just get to a point where you're just reading about this specific church in 95 A.D. when John wrote this stuff. Um, but really, like we've talked about, there are four themes of that all encompasses and the Bible is like that in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. You can't just, you, you gotta, can't, you can't just scratch the surface. You've got to get in there and, di- and dig, right. dig deep. Right. Right. And you know, if you couldn't read my lips a while ago, that means you need to get saved <laughs> because John didn't tell me to turn on my mic till I got through doing it. I'm not doing it again. So I, obviously it was prophetic. He was supposed to start this meeting. So, uh, as we prepare for the church of Thyatira, I'm not going to try to recount what I just said. Praise God. Um, uh, but this church, we believe from our studies, is from uh, 600 A.D. to about 1500. Yet, as we will allude to, we believe that the spirit that is in all these churches is from the kingdom of hell. And we believe that all these churches are still alive. I don't believe you can put an ending date on those churches mm-hmm. until Jesus comes back yeah. and binds that right. enemy of man's soul up. Right. So. Because, and, you know, you can, and I'll go real quick on this, but the four themes are one. How does this apply to us? Mm-hmm. Okay, how did this apply to that church literally at that time? Okay, how did this apply to the churches now? Because even when we talk about Ephesus or Smyrna, Mm -hmm. we have churches that have lost their first love. We've had people Mm -hmm. who were on fire for God and then lost it a little bit. Right. Okay, and then Smyrna, we've had churches that are persecuted and shut down. Right. We've had people that are persecuted and shut down. Right. Uh, And then these churches go through this. I'm not going to go through all of them like that right there, but tied with just, not only how this applies to you as an individual, how it applies to churches nowadays, how it applied to the churches then. Right. This also is a prophetic, um, age-appropriate um, prophecy, I guess, you could, yeah. even though I'm saying yeah. that another way, where yeah. these churches fit since the beginning, <clears throat> since Christ ascended, since he died, and the Christian movement started, these seven churches represent seven ages in the history of the church, and that includes all denominations in there. Today's, like Coach Shelby said, from about 600 to 1500, those who know that's basically the pinnacle of the Catholic Church. Right. Okay? <clears throat> After that, next week, the Church of Sardis deals a little bit more with the Protestant movement, and we'll get into that later. But th- there, there's a reason you have to sit here and you can't just scratch the surface. You have to study it out and see what it's telling us because this study we'll do today talks to us personally. It talks to the churches now, okay? Yes. Mm-hmm. And then it talks about that time in history, which, like I said, was the pinnacle of the Catholic religion, right. Catholic church.